this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to deviate slightly from the strict topic of Android development to show you how to create a simple Java server program and we're going to use this to um, demonstrate uploading, downloading and uh, other stuff possibly um, but um, to be able to upload and down stuff, download stuff we, we need some kind of server to upload stuff to and download stuff from and that's what I'm going to create in this tutorial or at least I'll create a, a hello world Java servlet program as the technology is called and um, we can then use that in future tutorials and I don't want to get too into too deeply into Java servlets here because it is kind of off topic but I thought it would be useful to have um, a Java servlet program just to work with, just to demonstrate how a phone can talk to stuff, talk to a server that's running on the internet. And I'm going to really quickly rush through creating a basic Java servlet here. And a Java servlet is a kind of server technology that can run on the internet and that your phone can then talk to. And it could also enable you to do communication between phones um, as I explained in a previous tutorial. If you want to know more detail about Java, about creating server programs in Java, then I've got a tutorial um, which you can find if you go to www.caveofprogramming.com, it's all one word, then you will um, find links to this um, Servlets and JSPs course. And Although the course isn't free, the first seven videos are, and you can watch those for free. And they take you right from setting up your system um, for Java servlet development, all the way up to deploying your Java servlet application on the internet. So you might just need this bit. And if you want more complex information about servlets and JSPs and creating sophisticated programs that will run on the internet in Java, then um, I'd be delighted if you signed up to the whole course um, and there's quite a lot of information here that can cover uh, most of what you'll, you could really want to do I should think at least for the purposes of phone programming um, including connecting to databases and all that kind of stuff but anyway um, here I've got um, I've set up Java EE well um, I've set up the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers, that's Enterprise Edition developers on my computer um, as, I, as I talk about in that JSP course in like the first tutorial or the second and um, I've, I've got I think I've just got the standard version of Java actually running on my machine there is actually Java EE version which you can download in, in addition to the standard SDK if you want but the important thing here is I'm going to use a host called CloudBees and they I think they use Java version 6 so I'm going to create this application using Java version 6 so I've installed the 6 version JDK 1.6 on my machine so I'm going to do like file new here and um, I'm going to go to dynamic web project and you'll only have this application in the Eclipse for Java EE developers you'll need to download that separately if you've only got the normal Java Eclipse version and I'm going to give this a name like Android Server Demo let's say and I'm going to set the dynamic web module version here to 2.5 for reasons that I shan't go into here and I'll click next and this all looks good and finish and now I'm going to right click that and go to new servlet and a servlet is a kind of Java class that can act as a server so it can run on the internet and browsers or applications can make requests to it and it can then send back data perhaps in the form of HTML pages in which case you've got a website or it could send back some kind of specialized format data just for your application so let's put it in a package I'll put it in com.cave of programming dot uh, android but you could just put it in um, any package you made up like call it demo or something it doesn't matter and let's give the class name let's make the class name server and I'll click next and 
this all looks good to me click finish and now I'm going to try to run this and I, I often get errors when I try to run this stuff to start with but I'm going to click the big green run button and um, I might need to end up changing a few things I click run on server and I should also say that I've installed Tomcat on my machine and top the Apache Tomcat server it's a free program that um, is used for it's, it's what we call an application server and it serves up it's like a container for Java servlet programs that um, can run on the internet it's, it's basically a server itself and so you'll, you'll need to install that and I appreciate that I'm rushing through this but again you can find much more detailed uh, descriptions of this stuff for free if you look at the first few videos of my servlets and JSP course if you need that or you could just write a, J, a PHP script or something like that. So let's run this on Tomcat 7 locally and click finish here. And this may work or it may not. And so that doesn't look good. But I need to actually go to my Java resources folder, source and a package, select server. And I need to actually run that to get this to work. Let's tick always use this server and click finish again. And um, I, I don't know why I'm getting this so much recently. I'm just going to clean my project. And let's try stopping Tomcat there. And I, I find that it's really fiddly to set this up. And once it's working, it tends to work. But you can have a lot of problems initially. But here we go, it's actually working now. And um, this is a blank web page. But I'm going to go to my server.java. I'm going to find do, the do get method. And I'm going to say here print writer out equals response dot get writer and response is an object that's passed in and we use that object to make responses like to send data back to our phone or browser. I'll add the input there with control shift O and I'll say out dot print ln hello world. So it's just like doing system dot out really and I'll save that and I'll click run and this has some terrible caching problems let's hit return and if that doesn't work get rid of it and click run again and stop it maybe let's get rid of all these windows and uh, get rid of that and let's go to project clean let's try it again and I'll make sure server is selected and I'll click the green run button and here we go finally it's working okay and it says hello world and so, and so this could be a web page and you can right click and this is actually a browser and do view source but I'm just outputting hello world so I'm not outputting HTML but I could if I wanted and now um, so you could test that on your local machine like if I copy this URL and I go to a web browser and I paste that in here I can actually access that server directly through my internet browser. But just for fun, let's let's deploy it to the internet. And what I've done is I've created a account with these guys called Cloudbees. It's at cloudbees.com. You can create a free account there. And I think Amazon and Google have similar services to this. And up to a certain amount of data usage or whatever, it's it's free. I never had to give these guys a credit card or anything. I'm just going to log in here and oh, I am logged in already okay that's good and I'm going to click applications here this is really nifty you can even have a free database of up to three, uh, five megabytes to work with your application and I'm going to create I'm going to click add new application and let's call it Android server click finish and um, they actually use cloud technology. A lot of these Java application servers use this cloud technology, so that if you if your web if you run a website or you run some kind of server that people's applications on their phones depended depended on, um, even if it went from like a few users really quickly to millions, hopefully you could scale up because you haven't got a single computer sitting there. You've got a whole cloud of them, and you can just use more bandwidth as and when you need it, as long as you're prepared to pay for it, of course. Now I'm going to go here, and I'm going to, um, you can deploy stuff really quickly, apparently, if you install their SDK, but I haven't done that. 
So I'm going to use this mechanism. I'm going to click this button here, click choose file. And it, well, I'm going to upload a WAR file, but I forgot I need to create that WAR file first. So let's go back to Eclipse and right click the project here, Android Server Demo, and go to export WAR file. And I'll call this Android Server Demo. Um, dot war. So let's actually go to browse under destination. Here's my desktop and I'll call it Android Server Demo dot war. And dot war means um, it means uh, web application uh, archive or something like that. It's kind of like a jar file but for um, web applications. And I'll click um, finish. I think I'm using Tomcat 7 which I think is compatible with CloudBeans. And one thing that you should check, if you go to properties, make sure you're building with one point, Java 6, 1.6. And that's only necessary um, at the moment. And CloudBees, of course, may upgrade. And if you're using some sort of Amazon service or Google service, maybe this doesn't apply. Um, but I need Java 6 for this. And so now I've got my WAR file. and go back to my browser, uh, which is here and click choose file here and android server demo dot war and click finish so it's deploying my application and this is going to run it on the internet and I could use this um, with, actu with an actual live application really although if I did anticipate heavy usage because there's like a bandwidth limitation for this for the free version I think then I probably would pay, you know, for um, for this service or for a similar service with Android or Google or someone. So now I can click on this URL and we won't see anything immediately, but um, it's gone to this URL. And um, if I go back to my Eclipse now, I can see this bit here. I've got local host 8080, and that's my um, the kind of well, it's the host name and port that my Tomcat server is running on. Uh, but this bit here is called the context root and that's basically the bit of the URL after the domain name and then we've got server which is the uh, actual kind of servlet URL on that um, domain name at that context root and, and we can set it up very easily so that you could just go to the domain name directly and see output but I haven't done that here and I'll just leave that so let's just copy that the context root and the um, actually, I don't think I, I don't think I need the context root because that will change when I up upload to CloudBee. So actually, I'm just going to copy this slash server bit at the end there and just paste it there. So I just need to go to my particular servlet and hit, ru hit return, and there's my servlet running, and it's it's on the internet. Anyone can see that, and um, you could even output HTML with that. But uh, I'm going to use it um, here for testing obviously these Android applications and we're going to go on in the next tutorial to looking at how we can communicate with this server. So join me again next time and until next time, happy coding.